One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, do it wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh. It takes children an age to learn how to do one-to-one -one correspondence. You know that kind of holy grail when they can go one, two, three, where they're pointing and doing one number for one object. Luckily, there are all sorts of exciting activities that you can use to really speed that process along. And today I'm gonna to show you some of those. I'm gonna show you my top seven ultimate one-to-one -one correspondence games that get children really excited, motivated, and starting to count one object for one number. This is Early Impact, let's do this. Hi everyone, my name is Martin from Early Impact. I've been an early education teacher for the last 12 years, and today let's get stuck into some of these exciting one-to-one -one correspondence games. Game number one is Splat the Dough. Super exciting, this one. Only for this is some kind of big tray or tough spot, big spot, and lots of little balls of dough. And you get you know, get the kids to make these, just little random balls, you don't have to be perfect spheres, and you just put them all over the place. More than this in reality, you know, like a hundred little balls would be amazing. Need some kind of dice as well. I've got this dice, it's a DIY dice I've made myself. What you do, one person in the group is gonna roll the dice, then you're gonna splat that number. So for example, I've got the number four. So what you do, everyone, they're gonna splat four, they're gonna go a bit like one, Two, three, four. Kind of as simple as that. It's just a really active game. It's good for making it physical and the children get used to we're one big movement for one number. Also, you can hit the balls dough with different things if you want. You can put goggles on and use little mini mallets and whack the dough. You can use something like a fly swatter to make it super, super exciting. Yeah, just a very physical, active game. Splat the dough. Game two, an absolute beast is Bubble Pop. What you need for this is some kind of ball mixture. I've made my own. I've just got some fairy liquid and some water and just mix it together. I've also got an eco straw as well and just a little container, something like this. If you're gonna do this with a group, a small group of children, have one container with a little bit of bubble mixture, one for each child and one straw for each. What you do, you're gonna get them to blow into the bubble mixture. I always do a bit of a practice with this just so they don't drink it by mistake. I always get them just to, to try blowing into the straw and seeing if they can feel the air on their hand. What you do then, you all blow into your ball mixture, loads of balls are gonna pop out of the ball mixture, a bit like this. What you do now, it's a, it's a case of pop and count. You go a bit like one, two, three, four, five, six. It's another very simple game. It's another really good one for getting in your brain that it's one point to one number and you know, one count. That's just, that is what the process is all about. Making it physical and making it fun. You can jazz this one up in all sorts of different ways. For example, using something to pop the bubbles with, like a, a lolly stick. One, two, three. That's good for fine motor as well. You can do the wait and pop game, where you just literally just wait and the bubbles just pop by themselves and you can sort of count them. One, there, one went there, two. <laughs> that kind of thing. So that's a good game as well. But any games with bubbles is always a very exciting thing. Give it a try. If you're liking these games so far, then please just dink that like button for me underneath this video. That would really help spread this video to a wider audience. So yeah, just a little dink on the like button. Thank you so much. Game number three is the action dice. This is my favorite active dice game. All you need for this is two dice. You can make something like these very, very simply yourselves. All I've got is two building blocks. And on one, it's just numbers. Very, very simple. On the other, I've drawn some actions. It's things like, hopping, or star jumps, or going on your tiptoes. Just simple actions that the children can have a go of, basically. What you do, you can roll both dice, get the children stood up, roll two dice, and then for example, two star jumps. You'll have to go over here doing one, two, and counting nice and loudly as you do. Five, this is quite a tricky one. Five, going shh. This is tricky because you can't count with your mouth. You've got to try and count either in your brain or on your fingers. Shh, 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 shh. So there we go. That is a harder one. If you want to just do simple actions, don't do anything like that. You just do actions where they can use their mouths at the same time. But I like to add a couple. There's another good one, roaring as well. This is a favorite one, roaring, where you go a bit like rah. So you do, for example, three roars, a bit like rah, rah, rah. Another tricky one, you've got to count with your hands. But yeah, there we go, give it a whirl. Game number four is making objects that link to a book. I'll show you exactly what I mean. Pick a book that the children really like and that they know quite well. For example, this is an absolute classic, uh, Harry McClary's Bone. It's got to be a book that has some kind of objects in it that you can create 
in some kind of pretend way, and then you can count the objects. In this book, there are basically six dogs. They look all, all kind of different. So to go with them, with this book, I've got these pebbles. These are painted pebbles. Uh, they're just pebbles of different sizes. For example, this is Muffin McClay. This one is Harry McClary. They're all different sizes of just painting with a bit of acrylic paint and drawn a, you know, a few simple features on, like a nose and all that kind of thing. They're really good for lots of different skills, these. They're all, they all weigh different amounts, so you can weigh them and see which one's heavier. They're all different lengths, so you can put them in order, but they're really, really good for counting. Let me show you how I'd use them with this book. Okay, so a simple circle time. This one, get the children in a circle, get the stones in the middle of the circle, and just read a bit through about the book. Like it starts, down in the town by the butcher's shop door, so that's Harry McClary from Donaldson's Dairy. So get Harry McClary, put him in the middle. How many dogs have we got? We've got one. Okay, just fast forward a little bit in the story. Chasing him home with her eyes on the bone, went Hercules Morse, Bottomley Potts, Muffin McClay, Bits Maloney, and Schnitzel Von Crumb with a very low tum. So it's basically all the other dogs. So let's put them behind Harry and we'll, uh, we'll count it all. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And you take your time, do loads of slow counting. We've got six, very exciting. In this book, one at a time, one dog has a bit of a disaster. There'll be six dogs, then one will get stuck in a bush. So you take one off, how many have you got? And you count them again, one, two, three, four, five. I'll show you how it works. But each time you have one less. So hungrily sniffing and licking their chops, they followed him up, past the school and the shops. They came to the sign selling Sutherland sauce. Through they all went, except Hercules Morse. So Hercules Morse got stuck, he's a big beige guy. I'll take him off. So we had six, how many have we got now? One, two, three, four, five, we've got five. It's just a really, really good way of counting the dogs. You can try and count them in the pictures as well sometimes, and just great for one-to-one -one counting. Game five now, and we're sticking with the stones theme, and these are number stones. Very, very, very exciting. And these combine storytelling with counting, which is uh, very, very exciting again. What you do, small group of children, you could do it outside or inside, wherever you want, it's all good. And what you have are some stones with some images on them. Let me show you the ones I've made, but you can be very creative. All I've got, i got these kind of white sparkly pebbles. I just got them from a, a builder's yard, basically, very cheap. And I've drawn different quantities of bugs on them. For example, this one has got four ants. This one has got two worms, five bees, for example. And just, you know, different quantities. It's from one to ten, all different. And what you do, you use them for making up a story. Get one out and it's something like, one day, two little worms went on an adventure. And get the children to count the worms. What, what happened? What did they find? Oh, they came to the little ants. How many ants were there? And get the children to try and count and then do lots of, you know, really slow count. Like one, two, three, four, showing your fingers, all that kind of thing. They came to four ants. Oh my goodness, what happened next? The ants were really scared. They had seen some nasty bees that were on a terrible mission. How many bees were there? There was one, two, three, four, five, all this kind of stuff. I just keep going like that. Make up a little bit of a story. If the children can make it up, amazing. You want them to really to try and bring the characters to life, but big emphasis is on counting, all doing it together, showing your fingers how many you've got, and just bringing numbers to life. If you're loving these activities so far, then a lot of these are contained in a free book that is 100% free, and you can find in a link underneath this video. It's called 50 Outdoor Number Activities on a Budget. There's a whole load more games coming up, guys, but just I thought I'd mention that I've got a free book that have lots of these games in them. The free book is 50 Outdoor Number Activities on a Budget. There's a link underneath this video. Totally free, it's an ebook. My 50 favorite, most inspirational outdoor number games on a minimal budget. Check it out underneath this video and it's completely free. Game six is action dance, and it's nice for the children to do actions and count those. That is a good way of learning all about one-to-one -one correspondence. Not just always doing objects or sounds or things, but actions is definitely a good one. So, action dance, what you do for this? You need some kind of dice again. I've just got the, this dice. It will come in handy for a lot of these games. And you put on some pumping music of your choice, any kind of thing, you know, some kind of disco classic tune, some pumping tune. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna do a simple dance move, but you're gonna do it a certain number of times and count as you do it. So for example, let's go for the number five. So you put the music on and you do something like, like this. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. And you just keep going and you do, you know, just go to five a few times, then change the number. Let's go for three, for example. We'll do a different dance move. It could be something like, like this one. Do a bit of that. One, two, three. 
three, one, and all that kind of stuff. Just make it active, get them all really enthusiastic and enjoying the counting, and lots of repetition. That really, really helps. Game seven is shot glasses. We're gonna get some shots now. It's sort of Jagerbomb time. Exciting times are here. What you need, some of these little shot glasses. These are a fantastic resource. Especially the ones you can get nowadays that are not shatterproof. You can kind of drop them and squish them by mistake and they don't shatter, which is all good. Right, what you do, get some shot glasses. I've also got some pom-poms as well and some tweezers as well, so it's all exciting times. And what you do, I've put some numbers on the shot glasses. I've gone nice and simple, I've gone one to five. Just to make it really exciting, I've made it like a repeating pattern as well. So we've got green, pink, green, pink, green. So it's uh, great for all that kind of repeating pattern stuff. I find this is really good for getting the children trying to match numeral and quantity, and it's just really good just for counting as well. So the simplest way of doing it is you try and get the right number of pom-poms into each little pot. Let's go for three, we'll go for the middle of the road to start with. One, two, three. And just, you know, all that kind of counting, because they're transparent, you can see into them, that's good for problem solving. Children can see when they've got the right number in there, as well as all that counting that's involved. Really good for ordering numbers, this one as well. And also it's really good for seeing how the numbers get bigger as you go up the number line. Because you can really see that five, for example, just looks so much bigger than one. Just lots more things in there. And it's just good for that, just for visualizing numbers, as well as all the great one-to-one -one counting opportunities that you get from doing this as well. Okay, let's quickly check out the Early Impact map today. Today we've got one viewer, Lucy, who is in Luton, who has commented on one of our videos. Thank you so much, Lucy. There's no magic wand when it comes to one-to-one -one correspondence, but hopefully some of the games I've shown you today, if you try those out, it will at least get the children excited, motivated, and make it visual, active, and exciting all at the same time. And that is the formula that you want. I've done a video all about my favorite number recognition activities and games. That is gonna be popping up on the screen somewhere around here. So go click on that video, check out the ultimate list of number recognition games that actually work, and I'll see you in that video.